Alright, and welcome everyone to the sixth session of the Akagi Group. Uh, I don't really have... well, I guess I have one or two announcements. Uh, the first is that we are wishing a very happy birthday to GM Josh, so if you see him on social media, etc., give him uh, your best birthday wishes. Uh, the second announcement is that uh, the Akagi Group is still staying uh, every other week, uh, but as you probably can tell by the fact that we're running this on a Friday, uh, today is sort of a one-off type deal where we're still going to go back to Thursdays at 6 45 p.m. Uh, starting next week so we'll be back on our normal schedule next week and the weeks following. Um, I think that's really it as far as the way I have in announcements. Uh, as you may or may not know, uh, Zines will not be joining us today. He is currently at a con breaking some sort of a D&D &D record so best, of wish best wishes to him. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and get started, and today's session is going to start a little bit differently than usual in that we're not going to have a strict captain's log, uh, one of those rare episodes of Star Trek where we just don't know the start date. And we start today's uh, session with the captain in sickbay, because somebody has been putting off their physical. So, uh, Captain Miller, you are in the middle of said physical by one Lieutenant Commander Jensen, and, uh, you know, he's asking you a standard barrage of questions. So he begins with, any signs of blurred vision? Any troubles focusing? Uh, no, Doctor, only when I walk in sickbay. Ah, I see that your humor is good as usual. That's good. The humor is the best medicine, as they say. Uh, tell me, have you had any joint pain? Any aches? Anything I should know about in the terms of pain? I uh, did, did experience some pain, but I was able to remedy it by just giving him some uh, Endorian Ale. I'm going to need you to be a little bit more specific, Captain. I, I know you're trying to joke here, but I, I do need to be very thorough about this. Uh, no, no, Doctor. Bad joke about our, our lovely First Officer. Oh, I see where you're going with that. You'll have to apologize. I uh, The Ractagino hasn't hit me yet. Let's see. Uh, what's next on the physical? Well, the good news, Captain, is that you appear to be in fine shape for a uh, human of your age. Uh, however, I cannot recommend that you go orbital skydiving. Uh, that's the worst news I've heard all day. I'll, um, I'll take that under advisement, Doctor. Oh, of course. And, uh, you know, I know you're probably going to go orbital skydiving anyway, just to spite me, but just know that when, if and when you do, you're probably looking at a little bit of lightheadedness, uh, probably maybe even a loss of consciousness due to the rapid acceleration that occurs from such an event. God, well, that's half the fun. Well, maybe, but we as doctors always tell our patients this anyway, that way when they show up in our sick bay, we can say, we told you so. And uh, it is at that point that uh, Lieutenant Commander Riley, uh, you walk into sick bay sporting an injury from something you did during your duty shift. And I will let you decide what that injury is. It can be anything from a minor injury to something major. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Lieutenant Mendoza dropped a... Uh... He seemed to drop a crate on my hand, and 
I don't think my finger is supposed to point that way. Jensen looks at you, Captain, and says, uh, one moment, we'll finish in a moment. Uh, yes, take a seat, Lieutenant Commander. Let's take a look at that hand. Uh, take your time, Doctor. So yeah, he, uh, he motions for you to sit down on the bio bed, and he pulls out a tricorder and begins scanning. And after a moment, he says, yep, that is a shattered bone there. Uh, that finger is going to need to be set, and that one is showing a hairline fracture. All right, uh, I think I can actually have this, you know, fixed up for you, Lieutenant Commander, in the next few minutes. Uh, however, just to be safe, I would recommend that you not go dropping crates on your hand in the future. Yeah, Mendoza's definitely getting the... He's getting the shit shift. I mean, third shift. And as I say that, I look at the captain, and I'm like, oh, I forgot. No, that, that sounds appropriate, Mr. Riley. And I kick my feet up on the bed, just kind of lay there and start whistling some sort of strange tune. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jensen says, I will be back in a moment. I have to grab the tools. Uh, does leave you alone uh, for a few minutes. Okay. Is there like, um? can I see my my injured finger? Oh yeah, you you definitely like he hasn't like hit it under a sheet or anything. No, I mean like is there like a scan? Can I see the bones? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You you can see the bones. It, it would be on the screen behind you on the bio bed, if anything. Yeah. So I just keep looking at it, and shaking my head. Yeah, and then I looked I just, at the captain. And I said, "This this never happened in my last command. I swear." I kind of peer over. It. Yeah, that's. That's good, broken. Uh, it feels that way, too. And it is after the few moments that Jensen does come back in the room with a dermal regenerator as well as a, uh, what do they call it, an, uh, an osteo-something. I forget the official term for it. Basically a bone regenerator. And uh, he takes your hand very gingerly, Riley, and says, I'm going to need you to hold still for this one unless you would like a bone growing the wrong direction. All right. Uh, I don't have to look at it while you do this, do I? I mean, I recommend that you not if you're at all squeamish. All right. And Riley both closes his eyes and looks away. Hmm. Captain, uh, if you don't mind, why don't you uh, distract Mr. Riley here while I work? Sure. So, Mr. Riley, what's the most exciting thing going on in engineering these days? Oh, well, uh, Jefferson uh, won the, the card game last night. Otherwise, everything's just humming along. And then yeah, did he, a scream did of he pain this time, or as, was it? As, as everything starts to go back in order. Uh, I think he cheated. I think he cheated. Ooh. I can't. So, Doctor, he's hey, he's only supposed to have five fingers, right, Doctor? What? That's, that's not the kind of distraction uh, Riley, he needs. Riley right looks now. immediately. You still have five fingers, but it's it's kind of in that awkward thing where your fingers like halfway back to normal, so it still looks pretty bad. Oh, oh, thanks for that, Captain. I really needed to see that. And he goes back to not looking at it. Jensen just shakes his head and mumbles something about captains and their prerogative, etc., etc. I'm just chuckling. Uh, that Mr. Jefferson, he, he cleaned me out last time. I, I have a feeling there's, there's more going on there. I think he's a telepath. Don't tell him I said that. He probably knows I said that. And uh, Jensen says, you know, still working on your hand, you do both know he has augmented eyes, right? Uh, I did not. Well, that's probably why he's clearing you out in cards. If you don't have the proper backing on the cards, he probably can see right through them. He's going on third shift with Mendoza right now. You know, he's never he's never played cards while Zions was there. I wonder hmm. This two this two might be in on something. 
Well, uh, also, Riley, we are getting a little bit of background noise. I don't know if that's anything you can control. Um, yeah, I can, just, I can mute my mic. Gotcha. Uh, but no, Jensen, uh, you know, finishes up your hand and says, right, as I said, Mr. Riley, don't go dropping anything new on this. And, oh, don't, uh, you know, try to arm wrestle or otherwise crush someone's hand, uh, at least for 24 hours. All right, you got it, Doc. Excellent. And, uh, Captain, it seems that your labs have come back. He, you know, motions at the uh, screen above your bio bed. Aside from a slight vit vitamin D deficiency, you should be fine. Uh, I would recommend taking a uh, supplement number 97 uh, whenever you have your evening dinner. All right. Thanks, Doc. All right. Well, I have no reason to keep either of you at this point, so you can leave whenever you like, gentlemen. And he uh, he goes back into the other room and he says, My God, man, what did you do to your leg? So there's probably some form of uh, an injury in the other room. Well, uh, the transporters aren't going to do maintenance on themselves. Uh, I'll see you in a minute, Captain. Sounds good, Mr. Riley. Uh, speaking, since I've got you here, have you seen the cat lately? Uh, me and the cat aren't exactly on speaking terms at the moment. It tried to kind of burrow into a, uh, a section of engineering that I deemed definitely off limits. Oh, that's no good. I, I asked Science if he could locate the cat, and then he said something about misusing ship scanners, and then he said he couldn't find it. So Barkley may be um, missing in action, as it were. Oh, well... <laughs> I wouldn't complain if we did a scan, but I'm not the commanding officer. Well, I thought I'd give him a day or two before I call an emergency shipwide search, you know. Well, if you do need me to do that scan, just let me know. We don't have to tell Zines. That sounds like the perfect job for Jefferson when it comes up. That's a good idea. Actually, that's a great idea. Well, Mr. Riley, I'm going to go find some trouble for myself. Uh, and I'll leave you to it. All right. So uh, you two head off in your uh, separate directions, and uh, we're going to cut to the bridge where, uh, because Zines is currently on holiday, uh, Lieutenant Commander Zarya, you are in charge. Uh, the captain is not there yet. Um, but, ironically enough, uh, Mr. Barkley the Cat is, uh, just sort of wandering the bridge at the moment. I've been spending a lot of time with Barkley lately, so as I'm sitting there, I'm sort of reaching down to him. You know, he While does, he's hanging out next to the chair. He does that cat thing where he arches his back and puts, you know, the tail up straight and starts making purring noises, and Cerule just sighs very deeply as if this is either annoying or just getting on her nerves in general. You know, Ensign, I never knew why other species had pets, but I'm sort of seeing the appeal now. I just wish it would stop making that noise. Yeah, I don't know why it does it either, but it seems to be happy. That That's... I mean, you're a doctor, Doc. Uh... You know what that noise means for Cations. I don't think it quite means the same for this species, so... It doesn't hopefully... Make it, it doesn't make it any less weird, though. Maybe we can keep Barclay in a different area of the ship, if he insists on making this noise too much. <sighs> well, whatever the case, sir, uh... Just reporting in that uh, we're still about a day out from our destination, uh, the Rikars system. Uh, last I checked, the planetary survey teams are ready to go whenever we arrive, so just a matter of uh, getting there at this point. Good to hear. Let's keep on our course. Very good. Uh, it is at this point uh, that Barkley, uh, the head sort of almost snaps towards the turbo lift, and uh, after a moment, Barkley runs off through one of the uh, the doors and disappears out into a hallway. Right as Captain Miller arrives out of the hall, uh, out of the uh, turbo lift onto the bridge. 
Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Captain. And Zario will get out of the chair and allow him to take his place on the bridge. Mm-hmm. Anything new to report, Mr. Zarya? Nope, we're on our way towards the Ricard system. Everything looks good for now. It's nice to have a break every now and then. It is indeed. Anything exciting on scanners? Absolutely nothing. How did your physical go? Well, I I managed to escape. That's about all I could report. Uh, The doctor gave me some advice. Um, Honestly, I've kind of forgotten it already, but I I managed to make my way out of there. Well, I know you don't want to hear this from me, but your follow-up psych eval is due in the next couple of weeks, so whenever you get the chance... Just a couple of forms to fill out. Nothing too strenuous. That sounds good. I'll uh, make sure to make an appointment and get it on my schedule and and we can get through that. Hopefully you'll get a break now between all of these different appointments. And it is is at this point that uh, Ensign Cerul kind of turns and says, uh... It's nothing major, sirs, but I am detecting that there is a comet uh, within our path. Uh, We haven't noticed it until now because kind of the angle of attack, as it were, but would you like to drop out of warp to inspect it? That sounds like fun. Actually, you know, it's been a while since I've taken the helm. Cesario, why don't you you keep the chair now? I'll see if I can remember how to fly a starship. You sure, Captain? Sure. It's a good command exercise for you. All right. So, uh, Miller, you're sitting at the con and uh, drop out. You know, dropping out of warps fairly standard. uh, But let's have a roll anyway because complications could be funny. Uh, It would be a control and a con at a difficulty of zero. I don't think I have a focus, uh, unless you'll give it to me for tactics or team dynamics. Nah, unfortunately not. Well, uh, that's one success, which gives you one momentum. So yeah, as I said, very easy to drop a ship out of warp. You just push a few buttons and the ship does the rest. And when you drop out of warp, uh, you do see on the view screen as it adjusts uh, a fairly standard ball of ice with a sort of trail behind it. And, you know, it's fairly standard comet, uh, all things considered. Of course, you you could have Cerule or Adler do a deeper scan, uh, but, you know, cursory inspection, just a regular old comet. Kind of look around. That's a leave it to Zions. I've got the navigation control and the photon torpedo buttons right next to each other. I'm glad I didn't blow up the comet. Uh oh, did we lose? Uh, did we lose Zarya? Oh, sorry. I was accidentally inline muted. Nice. Uh, I forgot what I just said. Can we go back two seconds? <laughs> so I can get a replay. <laughs> Miller had just made a comment about how the torpedo controls and the warp field uh, dynamics were right next to each other, so he almost blew up the comet. Well, Captain, that would certainly get it out of our path of travel. <laughs> oh no! And I'm, I'm reconfiguring the the console lay- layout, which I'm sure Zions will love. I'm moving all the things around, like the the weapon control buttons on another panel and all that. Eh, That looks a little more comfortable now. We'll see what Sign says when he gets back, I suppose. And it is at this moment that Cerule's ears kind of perk up, and she starts looking at the ceiling questioningly. 
Do I hear anything? Uh, roll me a insight and security difficulty one. Hey, you get a momentum back. Uh, yeah, there is uh, some kind of scrabbling or some kind of movement in the ceiling, which, you know, for a starship shouldn't really be the case. Does it sound familiar at all? Like, is it big, small? Uh, I would say uh, it definitely sounds like something big. Like, maybe not uh, bigger than like a cocker spaniel, but big all the same. I wonder if Riley would know how to get up there to take a look. Captain, should I call him up? That's a that's a good idea. I don't like strange sounds in the ship. Well, uh, as you go to uh, call Riley up here, uh, I'm going to spend some threat, and literally one of the um, ceiling panels drops out, and with it is a Talarian hook spider, which apparently the token is being difficult. So give me a moment. A Talarian hook spider drops out of the uh, out of the ceiling onto Captain Miller's face, and moments later, uh, Barkley the cat also leaps out of the ceiling and starts hissing at the spider. I was hoping it was Barkley. I didn't know he would have company. So uh, we're not technically in combat here, but uh, Captain, I do need you to roll me. A uh, opposed melee check. So this is going to be a daring co or a daring security for you, and uh, the number to beat. Uh, I guess I should actually roll for the spider. Uh, let's see what your number to beat here is. Uh, wow! Holy shit! Uh, you need to get five successes, <laughs> or this spider. I'm so screwed. This spider bites the crap out of you. Can Barclay yeah, help I don't, at all? I don't know if it's possible for me to succeed here. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Two ones, my god. Yeah, so unfortunately, uh, with only two successes, the Talarian Hook Spider does manage to uh, sort of get past your flailing arms or however you're defending yourself and does bite you uh, rather intensely uh, in the right shoulder. So let's see, it has five challenge dice here. So this could be potentially bad. This is potentially bad. Uh, so Captain, um, unless you want to uh, give me some more threat, uh, you are actually going to take an injury from this. Wow. Um, oh no! This is the thing. This is this is happening. You know what? I, I think I'll take the injury. Yeah, I'll take the injury. <laughs> All right. So, Captain, as the uh, the spider's uh, mandibles bite into you, uh, you let out a cry of pain from the intense agony that it's inflicting on you. And uh, at this point, because apparently spiders are a thing, <laughs> we're gonna actually go into initiative order here. So, uh, Captain, you are not in it because you have just taken an injury. Uh, I will say that, Riley, you can be a part of this, but you would arrive in one round. Or you can be Barclay. Or you, you, you could do Barclay the cat. <laughs> I, I think I'll be myself. Okay. I'll be Riley. Riley has a phaser. All right. So uh, the way you'll get here is uh, Ensign Fre Fredrickson says, uh, Lieutenant Commander Riley, we have a spider problem on the bridge. Uh, we're probably going to need you one way or the other very quickly. I got it. And uh, I immediately met, uh, motioned to uh, Weakass to follow me, and we head up to the bridge. Okay. I'll uh, also drop his token. Uh, but it is, uh, we'll say that's Fredrickson's, uh, Fredrickson's turn, but it won't actually, like, take the player's turn away. Uh, so if anyone wants to play Adler or Cerule or Barkley the Cat, uh, you guys can do so. But it is the player's turn. 
I would love to have Barclay the cat jump up and try to get the spider. Sure. Uh, that would be a daring and security from the cat. And uh, it would be a pose versus the spider. Which I think he actually has stats, so whoever would uh, like to roll for the cat, please go for it. Well, the cat doesn't necessarily have real stats. The cat has fake stats that we tossed in there. Well, they're real now. They're real now? Okay. And they're real low. <laughs> they are. And unfortunately... Sorry, you, why don't you go I, for it? Save me. I gave Barclay a focus in rodents, not creatures. <laughs> Ooh, okay. So, uh, let's see. Barclay does the chittering sound and, like, jumps up, but just lands on and not on the spider. Oh, on dear. Miller, not on the spider. Oh, so dear. now you have a cat on you as well. A large Maine Coon-sized cat. Yeah. Uh, so unfortunately, because the Hook Spider did score one success, uh, it is going to be able to counterattack with its hook legs. So this this could be bad for the cat. Uh, luckily, the cat is left with one stress, I believe, because you should be back at full. So he's left with one stress. So, Barkley, uh, run you know, away, I like you. Yeah, so Barkley the cat, you know, hisses and jumps up at the spider, and the spider just bats it away, and it goes... Row! Uh, so that's the cat's turn. Uh, it's now the hook spider's turn. Apparently I need to drop hook spiders on people. Holy crap. Uh, the hook spider is going to take a look at opportune targets, and, uh, Saria, you're, you're kind of the nearest person besides the rules, so... Let's, uh, let's see how you do against the spider. Well, the good news is uh, the number to beat here is zero. So if you score even one success, you can unarmed combat against it. And that's what, daring plus security? Daring plus security, yep. Would I have a focus with xenobiology? Unfortunately, no. Hand to hand combat. I figured not. All right. Well, oh, the, no. <laughs> the good news is that because it also did not roll a success, basically nothing happens. It's a stalemate. Um, but that is. But now the, I have a spider on me. You do have a spider on you. Uh, and if that wasn't bad enough, uh, I'm going to spend some threat to drop another spider on good old Fredrickson over there in the corner. So, Riley, uh, when you make it to the bridge, we're all going to be dead. And it's just going to be spiders. <laughs> um, then I will be in command. This was my plan. We'll all be replaced by spiders. The spiders will just be in our seats piloting the ship. Mm -hmm. I'll take off my mask and I was a spider all along. <gasps> Gasp. No. All right. So someone is going to need to roll for Fredrickson. Uh, still daring security for him. Uh, he needs to get, uh, wow, he needs to get three successes here. Otherwise, the spider's biting him. I will roll Fredrickson. He is not well equipped to handle this. No, absolutely not. Do you want our momentum? We have one. Yeah, yeah, I, it, it's probably not that bad idea. He's not going to do well. But yeah, let's throw another dice in there. He has no focus. His focus is on like subspace communications and talking. Unless, unless you allow Xeno linguistics to apply, like he's going to talk to the spider. <laughs> Hiss um, right back. I believe a spider has a reason of four, which is subhuman, so it's probably not going to do a whole lot of talking. Okay. Uh, no, so unfortunately, uh, Fredrickson is bitten as well. Okay, apparently Fredrickson is also down. He's, Jesus. Yep, he's out. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> These spiders, though. Holy crap, I imagined them as a gag, not an actual threat. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, it is at this point that, Riley, uh, you can arrive on the bridge with Weak Ass. Uh, where's Weak Ass? I just had him. There he is. Oh, apparently I have not set up Weak Ass's token. Uh, but uh, anyone can play weak ass as I get that set up. 
So it is the player's turn again. Is the spider... Are either the, are this both the spiders directly on someone, or are they like next to them? Um, they're both. One is on Fredrickson, and one is on Zarya. Uh, Fredrickson is down for the count. Uh, Zarya is fending off the one on her at the moment. But the, they're directly on top of them. Yes. So if you okay. do shoot them and roll a complication, you might hit the wrong target. <sighs> yeah, that's not fun. Daring security. Uh, daring security would be if you're mailing them. All uh, right. It is control security control, if you're yeah. shooting with your phaser. I do have to focus with mm, with phasers, though. I'm going to... No, I'm confident in my ability with a hand phaser. I'm going to attempt to shoot the spider that is on uh, Zarya's face. <laughs> Oh, Would dear. you want me to try to get it <laughs> off my face first? Yeah, I guess you could go before me. That's okay. probably a better idea. Would I get it off my face in the same way as trying to hit it? Yep, so it would be a daring security, and uh, whatever number of successes you roll is the number I have to beat. So, ELH, it doesn't specifically say in the rules that I have to be conscious to give my determination as commanding officer, right? This is true, uh, and I believe it's... Well, let me see this. I think it's someone you have to communicate with. Could my twitching body be motivation <laughs> for Zarya? You're just scaring me so much that I want to get it away. Um, I already rolled. It's I would okay. say she's already rolled, but uh, yes, because I find it funny, your twitching body can allow you to impart your determination for future rolls. <laughs> Okay, maybe I'll give it to Riley when he comes time for the shot. All right, well, let's see what the spider rolls. Uh, the spider has rolled one success, which means, Zarya, you both get a momentum, and you can do your unarmed attack damage. Which, uh, for you, I believe, is four challenge dice. Uh, input value dice pool... Just, just um, skip that. If you do the challenge dice macro, it should ask a oh, number of yeah, dice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Okay. So, uh, you uh, grab one side of the spider and throw it to the floor over here, uh, dealing two damage in the process, but uh, apparently spiders are very good at landing on their feet because they have so many of them. Uh, so the spider is still up. And uh, the good news is, is that's pretty much all the spiders have, because I don't feel like being super evil and dropping another one on you. Uh, so it is still the player's turn. All right. I aim my phaser and I fire at that Talarian hook spider that Zarya just threw off of her face. All right. So because you are aiming, you do get to reroll 1d20. I'm giving you my determination, Riley. Uh, my value is be brave, be bold. Get them. Okay. Be brave, be bold, kill spiders. I get a reroll? Is that what you said? Yeah, you get a reroll uh, if need be. Well, uh, oh, that's challenge dice for uh, her veteran. Gotcha. Sorry, I kind of misclicked everything. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, uh, because of the determination, that is three successes, which means you get a momentum and you may roll your phaser damage. Okay. I don't want to reroll because I'm terrified of the complication. Fair. I don't want to blow up the bridge. Uh, where's my damage? My damage is seven. So you see, if I wasn't convulsing on the floor to inspire you, you would have missed. So that's going to be d20 for damage, which is wrong. Just go to the challenge dice macro instead. I had the same problem. Oh, yeah, there we go. Five, that's enough. Uh, out of curiosity, are you trying to stun or vaporize the spider? 
I wouldn't be firing. Uh, I wouldn't be firing on the bridge with a uh, set to kill weapon. Just making sure. But yeah, uh, with a score of a five. Uh, by the way, you should be at two momentum. Uh, with a score of a five and one attack, that is enough to stun uh, this Talarian hook spider. So it is out of combat. Uh oh, did I delete the wrong thing? I deleted Cerule. Womp womp. Let's put Cerule back in there. All right. Uh, so at this point, I think the only people who haven't acted are Ensign Adler and Ensign Cerule. So however you want them to respond to this. Oh, let's have that's, uh... that's who's missing. Weak ass needs to be in there too. Let's have um, <laughs> weak ass. Let's have uh, Adler run over to Frederickson and attempt to grab that spider and throw him. Okay. Throw this, get the spider off of him. Right. Throw the spider, not the man. Not, not the man. I don't know if he's strong enough for that. All right. So uh, Ensign Adler is going to roll me a uh, another daring security, and that will get. Oh god, he's eight. so bad at this. <laughs> uh, who who wants to roll it? He's not made to be strong. He's made to be He's... smart. Everyone I've rolled has been knocked out, so I don't think I should be doing this anymore. There you go. Well, Holy crap. So, <laughs> at, this is a comedy of errors. So Adler <laughs> runs over and tries to grapple and otherwise deal with the spider, but the spider is just too damn nimble and manages to get its own bite in, in before uh, Adler goes down too. Okay, Rest so Adler, peace, Adler. Adler only takes two stress worth of damage. So he's still up, but he does take a bite from the spider. <laughs> All right, I think the only one who... Uh, no, we have Cerule and Weakass, and uh, shooting a phaser towards Adler would mean a complication hits Adler. Um... I think weak ass just attempts the same thing, even though he's not good at it. Okay. So weak ass runs over, and weak ass, that's a daring security for you. He is also not skilled at this. <laughs> okay, two successes. Let's not see. bad, not bad. Uh, I have only, no, that is, that is two successes, but the active player wins. So yes, weak ass can uh deal with the spider now he can either throw it free or uh you could actually try and like punch its lights out sort of a thing i think um we just throw it free okay uh so go ahead and roll me a unarmed attack damage which for him should be a uh, difficult or value of two two dice two dice you got it all right so uh, exactly. he, Perfect. he grabs it, wrenches it free, and throws it over where the other spider has landed and uh, deals all of one damage in the process. But hey, that's, uh, that's some damage. And at this point, I think the only person who hasn't gone is finally Cerule. So whatever Cerule wants to do. I want Cerule to stomp on the spider. Excellent. So another daring security. Oh dear. And uh, the good news is, is the spiders have also failed. So Sewell runs over, tries to stomp on the spider, and just the spider, too nimble. It's, uh, <laughs> as I said, this is a comedy of errors. <laughs> Starfleet's best, bested by a single Talarian hook spider. I love it. All right, so uh, that is everyone. So we're going to start round two, and the spider is going to go next. And what the spider's going to do is it's going to leap at Cerule. Uh, so if Cerule rolls all of one success on a daring security, she can punch it back. Very nice. That means you actually get uh, one momentum. And yeah, go ahead and roll her unarmed, which should be four for her, I believe. So, so rule just slaps the spider just away just slaps the spider and sits there on the floor hissing and making spidery noises whatever the hell a noise a spider makes 
<laughs> but uh, it is uh, pretty much the player's turn until either the spider is dead or somehow we get to round three. I think I'm the best, uh, at least the, the one most likely to actually do something here. Mm-hmm. Please just shoot so, the spider. Yeah, I'm going to move just a few steps over. Okay. And then fire at the, the spider. All right, control security, please. And just to, just to make sure, I'm going to use one momentum. Okay. Just got it. Nice. All right. Yeah, go ahead and roll me uh, your challenge die here. Yeah. There we go. That is enough to put it down. And uh, as the spider sort of flips over and curls its legs, uh, you guys are now out of combat. Uh, however, uh, the bad news is, is that Miller and Fredrickson have taken a lethal injury, which means that uh, someone is going to need to perform a daring medicine on both of them. Difficulty of one, oh. but if not performed, death is on the table. And I think Miller unconsciously is. Uh, see, Miller unconsciously is kind of mumbling. He's like, "Oh no, that that tickles. No, I I can't stay. I've got to get oh. back to back on duty." <laughs> Riley, call the doctor here, and I'm going to yeah, run that, over to Miller, and I'm going to use my determination. Driven, no, actually, no. Both body and mind must be healthy as mm. my value, so that I can get at least one success on this mm -hmm. all right so yeah daring medicine uh difficulty one and you already have two free successes xenobiology let's just see how how much i can get on this yeah i'll give it to you because he's human and you're not but all right so uh three successes which means you get two momentum you stabilize Miller. Miller, you come back around. You're on the floor. Uh, you don't really remember how you got on the floor, but you're on the floor nonetheless. As she was doing that, can we say I was contacting the doctors? Yes. Uh, however, the doctor is... Uh, well, let me say it. So uh, as you call the doctor, he says, Let me guess. Talarian hook spiders, right? Uh, yeah. I, I've He's been getting reports on all <laughs> decks. Uh, sorry, uh, I, I've been getting reports on all decks that apparently, like, we've stirred the hive or something because we've got attacks across the ship. I could understand where it was, uh, oh, you, weird, you, weird you are roboting. Everybody's roboting. Everybody's roboting. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Let me change server regions. Okay, uh, we are now on U.S. Central. You sound better. You sound better? Okay. Already, yeah. Okay, uh, so what uh, what happened there before the roboting uh, is uh, that uh, Jensen responds, it's Talarian hook spiders, right? Apparently we've kicked the hive or something because uh, I'm getting reports across all decks of people getting injured by these things. Well, send a team immediately because we have some very serious injuries on the bridge. Uh, I'm running triage here. Uh, I'll send one when I can. And then I'm going to put security on a, on a shipwide alert. Okay. I pick myself off the floor and I look around. Uh, hey, Riley, how's your finger? Uh, how was your face? Uh, uh, attached. Uh, what happened? Uh, well, I don't know. I, I came up the turbo lift and suddenly there were spiders. And I, I'm going to guess during this um, one of Adler or Weakass would have uh, started to do something for Fredrickson. Yeah, yeah so. I, was, I was going to go over to Fredrickson. Okay. And just take care of that. I have a shit ton of momentum. So again, another daring medicine, difficulty one, which is you get it. So Jefferson or Fredrickson is back up. Uh, 
Um, Mr. Zarya, is there something we could put in the environmental systems that will take out all these spiders all at once? Do I know of anything that we can put in there that won't, like, be dangerous to us? I think most chemicals that would kill the spiders would probably be dangerous to us. Let's see. Why don't we have you do a reason and science or reason medicine? Either could apply. Um, let's say that this is a difficulty of two. Would xenobiology count? Oh, most definitely. Can I assist by starting to look through the computers? You certainly can do so. Uh, you would be uh. assisting with a control and science. And you only roll one die for the assist. Alright, so you get uh, two momentum on that. You're up to five. Uh, yeah, Zarya, there's, uh, there's quite a number of chemicals that you could put into the air to uh, sort of kill the spiders as the air circulates. Uh, however, the problem isn't so much killing the spiders as the fact is that you're going to have, like, bodies of them in, like, places that are hard to get to. So, basically, if you do go through the atmosphere thing, probably Riley's people are going to have to crawl through every Jeffrey's tube and clear them out. Riley, are you good with that? It's going to take a lot of overtime to get rid of all these spiders. If we kill them this way. Well, it's a good way to truly get to know my ship. Is there a way I that... Wanna... Could we, like, <laughs> attract them to one area? That way we don't have to go and clean them all up? I would say if you spend a moment, if you spend two momentum to create the advantage, yes. Great, I'm doing that. All right. <laughs> so it's done. Yon, you uh, you recall that uh, there is some form of uh, an aphrodisiac to the Talarian hook spider that attracts them in droves. Um, we'll call it Chemical X because why not? Uh, if you put Chemical X in one of the cargo bays and then flood the cargo bay with the gas you would conceivably get most of them in one swoop. Let's just vent them into space. You could do that, yes. Let's do both. Gas them and then vent them into space. Sounds like a plan. All right. Yeah, I'd prefer that to, to get them out of the ship as soon as possible so we don't have any further injuries. So as you all are doing this, uh, Barkley the cat sort of meows, goes over to one of the Talarian hook spiders and just starts batting it with its paw. Oh, yeah, I only stunned these things. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'm going to stomp on... I'm going to finish them off if, if I can. Okay, just want to remind you, if you stomp on them, you're going to ruin the carpet. Well, Barclay is going to try to eat one. Sure. If I, if I mess up the carpet, then Mendoza is going to have to be the one that fixes it. <laughs> Commander, is it worth keeping one of those around to figure out where they came from? Yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. Um, can we put a stasis field around one? Sure. So let's put a stasis field around one, and then I will... Uh, stop on the other one. All right, it Barclay's makes... already eating it. Yeah, I was gonna say. So Barkley is uh, is eating it, and if you go to stomp on it, he'll he'll meow and get out of the way. And as your foot comes down, there is a sickening, like a balloon bursting, as just green guts go everywhere across the carpet. And then I look at Barkley and say, "Stay away from this. This probably isn't good for you." Barkley looks offended. Hey, don't give me that attitude. I'm your commanding officer, Barkley. Meow. And Miller walks over. I pick up. I pick up Barkley. Come here, little kitty. Meow. Is the mean man picking on you, little kitty? Meow. Cat noises. This episode brought to you by Cat Noises. <laughs> All right. So, uh, that's uh, the end of the scene, so you do lose the momentum. And uh, long story short here, as I clean up tokens, 
Uh, long story short, it turns out that one of the crates that you got in your last layover, because remember, uh, the last session you guys had spent a lot of your deuterium and anti-deuterium to sort of set up the uh, Takan solar suppressor, I think is what I called it. Um, so you had to stop in at a starbase to resupply and all that, and one of the crates you took on uh, had Talarian hook spider eggs in it. So... That's uh, that's where they came from. Thanks. And yeah, uh, you know, after uh, maybe you know a couple hours, uh, after you all get some rest, etc., uh, you do arrive at the um, what did I call it? The Rukars system. And for sake of argument, we'll say that uh, Zarya and Riley, you guys can both be on the bridge if you so wish. Uh, Crewman Weakass has replaced the carpet at this point, so the carpet has been fixed. I'm gonna hang oh, out. The carpet looks part. much better without spider guts or pieces of my face on it. Are you sure you don't necessarily remember the spider dropping from the ceiling, Captain? I remember pulling his in behind the comet. And then it kind of gets a little strange. Um, it did yeah, happen very fast. I had a fun dream about an Orion lady I used to know, and then I woke up and saw Riley, so that was a bit of a surprise. Yeah, that's probably a bit of a shock to the system. I think the next time we stop somewhere for supplies, let's double check all the crates. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of getting tired of these surprises. First a cat. Spiders. What's next? Scorpions. Cling we, no, fine. wait, we did that. The cat's okay. It's fine. Yeah, the cat is fine. Meow. He's a That's very a consistent. That's a compliment, Barkley. You're fine. You're not Meow. a spider. Meow. <laughs> uh, uh, Cyril just kind of coughs politely and says, <clears throat> Well, sirs, uh, if you will direct your attention to the view screen, uh, I can tell you a little bit about the system. <laughs> so, uh, yes, yes, Mr. Cyril. Yeah, so the view screen shifts, and uh, on screen you see that you have arrived in a binary star system. Uh, one sun is a smaller uh, blue star. The other is soul-like, uh, which I believe makes it a class G. It's been a while since I've looked at uh, stars. In any case, um, the only planet that's in the system is a larger class J gas giant. Uh, however, uh, and Cyril says this in, in character, uh, Cyril says, and as you can see here, sirs, uh, one of the moons, one of the larger moons around this planet uh, is a Class M desert world. Uh, surface scans and uh, what little long-range sensoring we've done uh, shows that it has little in the way of vegetation, but it should be perfect for a Vulcan colony of some sort, uh, assuming, of course, we do a proper planetary survey first. That sounds like an interesting candidate. Let's deploy our shuttles in our standard... Uh, pattern for exploring or mapping the system. Out of character, you remember the whole plan we had where we put the, the ship in an, an interesting spot and then we have shuttles go out and do all the scanning. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, it is at this point uh, that actually, surprisingly, uh, Mr. Jensen, Doc Jensen, walks onto the bridge and he says, uh, ah, good, Captain. Good to see that you uh, recovered from that, that spider bite. Uh, ooh, one second. Uh, can you hear us now? Uh-oh. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you, yes. Yep. Yes. Can you hear us? Apparently not. Hmm. Can't hear anyone. Hmm. Uh, try reconnecting to Discord. Yay, tech issues. While we're doing technical issues, let's see if we can hear my cat. 
No. She's not loud enough. Need to put an amplifier on that cat. Get it up to like 120 decibels. Tilly, do you want to yell? Do you want to be the voice actor for Barclay? Okay, I can hear you now. Of course. That's awesome. When I meow. That's when I meow. All right. So uh, as Jensen walks onto the bridge, he says, uh, yeah, good. Captain, good to see you recovered. You too, Fredrickson. Uh, Captain, can I have a sidebar in your ready room for a moment? Sure, Doctor. After you. All right. So, uh, we go to the ready room and, uh, you know, take a seat and, uh, Jensen remains standing and he says, uh, well, Captain, uh, something I forgot to tell you, uh, during your physical is that you're actually due for some away mission time. Uh, you know, standard procedure, all captains have to do, uh, so many hours of, uh, you know, away team mission leading. And, uh, you know, this is one of those rare opportunities where you get to stretch your legs, which I think would be good for you. That sounds wonderful. You'll never hear me complain about going on an away mission. Mm, yes. and uh, unless, unless there are spiders. I think I'll avoid the next planet that has spiders on it for a while. <laughs> Fair. Well, you never know. We could, find, uh, we could find almost anything on that planet. Anyways, that's all I had to say. Uh, I'll make sure to uh, properly brief Zines when he complains about this. Well, if Zines doesn't have something to complain about, it leaves him a little uneasy. So I like to give him plenty. Nah, typical Andorian. All right, that's all, Captain. And uh, he walks out. And you can return to the bridge. I think when I walk on the bridge, I'll I'll point to Riley and say, "Riley, there's a spider on your shoulder." No, I'm not falling for this twice. Nah, uh, uh. -uh. Wait, cat, is there? The cat like puts a paw towards Riley and says, "Meow." Okay, okay, and I look. There, there is a small spider, just just a tiny one. I. Try to shoo it off my shoulder. All right, it's easy enough to brush off, get rid of. Well, you made it sound like that was something huge. Come on, guys. Are you all afraid of spiders or something? Oh, yeah, the big one's almost killing you. I forgot about that already. Yeah, after today, we probably should be afraid of spiders. Well, the doctor tells me that I should go on an away mission, so... Anyone want to tag along? Let's go check out this moon. Sure, sounds great. I kind of zoned out when people were talking about the moon earlier. Uh, what did I miss? Uh, Cerule rolls so. her eyes and <laughs> says, Well, uh, if you'll pay attention this time, uh, it's just a Class M world, a uh, Class M moon, and it's, uh, it's potentially a good candidate for a Vulcan colony. We just have to do the planetary survey. Ah, okay. Well, I wouldn't mind getting off the ship. Wonderful. I currently have Mendoza and Jefferson doing a full a full scan of the ship to make sure there's no more hook spiders. Because that was not fun. Well, let's all gather some equipment and meet at the shuttle bay. Mr. Cerule, you have the con. Of course, sir. All right. So, uh, we're going to skip ahead a little bit, because you have two momentum already, and I think that's plenty for what's coming. So, uh, after about maybe an hour's worth of prep and an hour's worth of flying down to the moon, uh, you arrive here uh, on the in the middle of what is a rocky desert terrain. Uh, as the shuttle sets down and it opens up, uh, you step out into an alien landscape. Uh, you see the Class J gas giant uh, very prominently in the night in the uh, in the midday sky. Uh, you also see the binary stars uh, smaller than the planet, obviously, uh, in the background. Uh, one, as I said, is soul-like, so it's a yellow star. The other is a blue star, smaller in origin. And yeah, uh, pretty much all around you is sand, rock, and not much else. I can see why people say this is a good spot for a Vulcan colony. 
It's hot. That's about it. Different people prefer different environments. And this is one that I do not prefer. And I've got oh, a big grin on my face. Ah, this this reminds me of home. And where are you from, Captain? Uh, the colony on Camus 3 doesn't roll much like this. We've been working the last uh, 60 years or so to try to terraform it, but it's a lot like this, really, except we don't have the gas giant. That's that's a pretty remarkable view. Yeah, that would definitely take some getting used to. So, Mr. Zarya, how did the seasons look on this planet? Is Is there a landing spot that would be better for a, a colony? Inline muted again. Is there a particular sort of scan that I should do to figure that out, or yeah, let's have you decide. do a uh, let's have you do a reason science or a reason engineering difficulty one. All right, you get a momentum. Uh, well, the good news is is that there's a lot of places for a potential colony. The only problem is, is you're not really detecting, um, how do I say this? There's not really any good aquifers around, which means that if someone did put a colony down, at least on this portion of the planet, um, they would either have to, you know, sort of reclimate the water from the air, or they would have to generate it themselves somehow. But that's just your first scan. And that's probably something that Vulcans would be used to doing, living on a desert planet. Mm -hmm. So that's, it looks like pretty much anywhere on the planet, as long as you're ready for this sort of environment, would work out just fine. That's good. We can always bring water in from outside the planet as well. We, we ran into a comet on our way here. There could be other bodies with ice in the system. So that's not completely frightening to me. Do you see any, on your scans, any sort of dangerous creatures, Tolarian hook spiders or otherwise? Well, hopefully there are no Tolarian hook spiders all the way out here. Um, would so I know Riley, from that? Uh, I Actually, oh. this is the best way to do it. So Riley, sure. how do you feel about snakes, Riley? Ah, I love them. They're amazing. Ah, well, then a uh, a black snake, maybe uh, two or three feet long, uh, slithers out from behind one of the rocks and starts beelining towards you, or at least in your general direction. I, I was being sarcastic, and I start reaching for my phaser. And at this point, Zarya and Miller, you also see said snake. I'll draw my phaser, but I'll say, Riley, not, not so fast. Let's give it a chance. Uh, yeah, oh, okay, sir. All right. So it gets closer and closer and closer. And then right when you maybe start thinking of actually pulling the trigger, uh, it goes between your legs and you look behind you as it uh, burrows slightly into the sand, like it almost does like a, a head leap uh, into the sand. And it pulls out what appears to be like a giant cockroach of some sort and just begins eating and chowing down on it. Okay, first thing, let's make sure that none of this stuff gets on the ship. Fair. No snakes. No cockroaches. No, no cockroach-like things. Um, did your scans pick up any of this life? So interestingly, uh, no, her scans did not pick up the sign of any life whatsoever. Uh, besides maybe a bit of vegetation at the very peripheral of her scanning range. But no, these life forms did not pick up. Unusual. Hmm. Would I be able to scan the rocks to see if they somehow interfere with our, our search for life? A logical conclusion. Uh, let's have you do a reason science. Uh, difficulty two, and one person can assist you with the same. I'll assist you. 
since I'm already doing the scan. I got one. All right. Let's see if Zarya gets you the assist. Does not. Nope. Uh, I will say this can succeed at cost if you like, but yeah, I would take the two threat for it. Yeah, why not? Okay. So the threat yeah. just means more spiders, and the spiders haven't hurt me yet. <laughs> Famous last Famous words. Famous last words. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, your hunch is actually pretty correct. Um, there is a dampening property uh, within the rock face. Uh, that seems to almost be a sensor-absorbing material, uh, sort of like how the paint on a Blackbird or uh, a Stealth Bomber is specifically designed uh, to help absorb radio waves and other forms of scanning technology. Sort of the same thing here. Uh, so uh, it's something that you could potentially compensate for, but it would involve a lengthy calibration pro process with your tricorder. <laughs> <laughs> that actually sounds like fun to Riley. Is this something uh, Akagi can help us out with with her advanced sensors? Uh, I would say yes. If you would like to call back to the Akagi, uh, they could perform a sensor scan for you. Captain, I think if I reconfigure the primary nucleonic imaging relay in my tricorder and also hook up with the computers on the Akagi, I think we could get through this. It's just going to take time. Uh, sounds good, Raleigh. We've got a good view, so I don't mind spending time here. All right. So and I immediately take out my engineering kit, pop it open, and start uh, essentially disassembling my tricorder. Gotcha. And I'm going to give you one free bonus dice for the good techno babble. Uh, <laughs> so you're going to be rolling a daring and engineering. Uh, the difficulty will be a three. Uh, however, the ship will assist you with a computers and let's say science sorry what what um what did you say that was it's a uh... uh, daring and engineering for you and a uh, computers and science for the ship and the can i possibly assist uh how would you be assisting uh probably just looking over raleigh's shoulder maybe being a little <laughs> annoying and saying hey raleigh what's what's that do what's that for uh, sure. I hold have, the Akagi. I have a focus in reverse engineering. Does that apply? Sure, why not? And I'd like to also burn one momentum. Okay. All right. So that Would gets the Akagi you. have an applicable focus? Uh, the Akagi always has a focus. Okay. Oh, it doesn't help. Sorry. All right. And I think we're just missing Miller's assist. Is it daring engineering also? Uh, let's do presence command for you. Cool. So assisting Riley, you do get a reroll on a d20 if you want to, but that's oh, a very good roll. I think already. we lost him. Rip. Hopefully he'll be back shortly. Technical just... issues tonight. Yeah. Just say team dynamics as a focus? Most definitely. It's because it's a Friday. That's why we're having technical difficulties. Yo. Sorry, I had to... Uh, people in my house don't answer doors anymore, so I had to do that. No worries. All right, so uh, with four successes across the board, uh, that means that you get one momentum back. And yeah, uh, it maybe takes you a few hours between working with the Akagi and... Miller uh, mother henning you, uh, but the good news is, is that, you know, uh, the location is, as Miller has said, uh, it's a very pretty sight. Uh, the heat is maybe just a little bit unbearable, but it's not like tremendously bad or anything. Like it's not like, it, it's a dry heat, I think is what I'm trying to say here. It's it's a nice, pleasant dry heat. It's not like a, a really sort of uh, wet heat, if that makes any sense. Uh, you know, it's not very humid. Um, are there I, any shady spots to wait? Uh, you could. So you, you kind of see how there's shadows underneath the rock yep. faces. You could pen, uh, potentially sit uh, beneath one of them, no problem. I'm going to hang out over there. The okay. sun's a little bit too hot. Okay. Just watch where you're sitting, I... Mr. Zarya. I'll keep an eye out for but... any creatures. 
I got to tell you, I'm just glad that I'm not going to be a colonist here. And uh, Riley, as you put the finishing touches on uh, your tricorder, uh, I'd like you, and this is not going to be assisted by anybody, I would like you to roll me a Reason Science uh, difficulty 2 uh, to see if your um, tricorder modification, or let's do a Reason Engineering to see if you have completed successfully. Okay. And my focus, does it still apply? It still does, yes. Okay. So yeah, with uh, with two successes, you can confirm that um, your tricorder has an increased uh, acuity and precision and range. And it is indeed penetrating the uh, sensor dampening properties of the surrounding rock. Uh, however, as you start to maybe tell everyone else this, uh, you spot in the distance what appears to be gathering storm clouds, very dark, ominous-looking storm clouds. Did we transport down, or did we take a shuttle? Uh, you brought a shuttle down. Okay. Uh, guys, looks like there's trouble on the horizon, and I point towards the storm clouds. Oh dear, maybe we should double tap it back to the shuttle. Mr. Riley, do you have any idea how long we have until that hits? Do I? Yeah, yeah. Uh, based on its rate of speed, you've maybe got 10, 30 minutes, somewhere between 10 and 30 minutes before it hits you. Okay, I pass that along to the captain. Yeah, let's get to the shuttle and do a liftoff. We can also do some observations from orbit. We should observe the storm too, because if those are if this storm is as bad as it looks from here, that could affect any effort to colonize the planet. We can definitely That's a very good point. Scan from orbit. And I'm going to spend some thread here that you know about halfway back to the shuttle, uh, the storm has increased in speed and is nearly upon you. Uh, the wind has started to pick up. The light has. In, uh, decreased in visibility sand is being flung everywhere uh, you can feel the humidity rising in the air and you can both see and hear these massive lightning strikes uh, coming down and turning the sand into glass um, it's, it's a very beautiful but at the same time deadly sight um, and the bad news is is in order to get back to the shuttle um, you're looking at maybe another five to ten minutes if you push yourselves. And to make things even worse, uh, Miller, you do get a garbled hail from the Akagi, and it's Ensign to Miller. Do you read, Captain? I'll flip up on my communicator, but at the same time, what I'm going to make everybody do is it's not very pleasant, perhaps, but we'll all have to like hold on to each other's belt or each other's tricorder strings so we don't lose each other in in the the storm. Like someone could go drifting off and you wouldn't see them ever again. Mm -hmm. Just to keep all of us together. But I'll flip over my communicator. Yep, Akagi, this is this is the away team. Barely read ion storm level six. Recommend not lifting off or staying in shuttle. Akagi, other away teams, and that's all she's all. That's all that comes through. Understood, Akagi. Take the ship wherever you need to in order to protect it. If it's a, if it's a nion storm passing through the system, we'll bunker down and don't worry about us for now. Affirmative, and then the signal actually just gets cut off as the storm intensifies. Can I find? Can I see it? Uh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I think you're reading my mind. <laughs> can I find using my uh, modified tricorder? Can I see a spot that would be suitable for shelter? You certainly can. And since you've already done the rolling for it, I will say that uh, there is indeed a a cavern. Um, so if you will imagine, I'll draw on the map here. So you see that sort of rock face to the right. Uh, if you will imagine, you wouldn't see this passing by it normally. But if you look at it at the right angle, 
there's actually an entrance to a cave. Okay, I uh, I look at the tricorder and I look over there and I say, uh, Captain, it looks like we could probably take shelter over there. Sounds good. Lead the way, Mr. Riley. While spitting sand out of my mouth. Mm-hmm. And yeah, sand, it's coarse and rough and it gets everywhere. Uh, and by the time Great you uh, by the time you guys get into the, the mouth of the cavern, uh, it's really starting to come down. Uh, I use the phrase cats and dogs lightly, but you're seeing everything from actual rain to hail to pretty much every sort of meteorological downpour that you could expect. Um, but uh, once you step into the cave and get a few feet into it, uh, there's sort of a sound dampening effect. And uh, if you walk even a little bit further, uh, you can barely hear the storm outside. But for the moment, uh, you guys are safely within this cave. And uh, this cave uh, actually looks like it extends back uh, quite a bit. Um, it seems to be very open, uh, very uh, sort of typical for a, ri a river-created um, sort of cavern. And uh, I couldn't really find a good shot that didn't have the light, so let's just imagine that the lighting effects you're seeing are bioluminescent crystals. Well, I guess they're crystals, so they're not bio, but they're luminescent all the same. What's the temperature like? Uh, it is a noticeable difference. Uh, let's say that uh, the exterior is somewhere like 32 degrees centigrade, so high hundreds, if I can do my math right, uh, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, in here, it is 22 centigrade, or somewhere around like 60 to 70 Fahrenheit. Okay, but it's not... We're not freezing. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, it, is, okay. it is definitely a welcome respite from the temperatures you just experienced outside. Okay, how's everybody doing? Dirty, but well, generally fine. Yeah, just a lot of sand, which I guess is preferable to spiders. Is there any sign on your reading? Oh. Who is gone? Oh, he dropped again. Yay, tech oh, issues. I was directly talking to him, too. Yay, okay. tech issues. There you go. Hello, hey. welcome back. Sorry. That Did was my read? fault. That's okay. Did your reading say how big the storm was? Are you able to tell maybe how soon it'll pass? Uh, do any of you have survival as a focus? I do not. I have botany, but there are no plants. I think it's Zines that has it. Yep. Um, I would say that uh, if one of you, if Riley's still having tech issues, um, if one of you wants to roll an insight and in science as you're observing the storm... Uh, I can give you an answer. Uh, the difficulty here would be a one. Sorry, that one wasn't my fault. My Wi-Fi just... No worries. Not... I just rolled to see how like, soon the storm will pass. Mm -hmm. And yeah, with the one success, uh, what you're detecting is that this is actually both an ion storm... Uh, and an actual storm front that is colliding. That's probably why you didn't want to lift off because uh, an ion storm is a threat to even, you know, the Akagi. Like, they have to take certain measures. Um, so between both the ion storm sort of ionizing the atmosphere and stirring up the storm even further, you're maybe looking at about 12 to 16 hours here on the planet. I mean, you could attempt to leave sooner, but let me just say it is a difficult contest to get out of here. Do we at least have a small amount of supplies, or are those all in the shuttlecraft? Those are all in the shuttle, unfortunately. And it's not safe to go over to the shuttle because who knows if the wind will blow the shuttle away. Well, it's not that strong, but it's something that would definitely involve a series of checks to get to the shuttle and back. Yeah, definitely. Or all of you can to the shuttle and then you stay there kind of a thing. Can I scan to see if there's any life forms in this cave? You can indeed. Uh, that's going to be a reason science. Uh, difficulty of one. So 
So it's the strangest thing, Riley. Uh, you know, you haven't detected any life worth noting so far. Like, it's all been just, like, lower life forms, quote-unquote. You're actually detecting what could be a humanoid life sign deeper into the cavern. Captain, there might be someone or, or something deeper into this cave. Oh, that's interesting. Let's go check it out. I guess we have nothing better to do. Mm -hmm. All right. That do would we make things a lot easier. So that we know, do we want to leave some sort of path so we can find our way out again? Or are we just going to blindly go into a cave? Is it just one path down or is there multiple? Well, uh, if you walk for maybe about five minutes down into the cave, you do see that it does branch occasionally, uh, but that the quote unquote main path is easily followed. Which uh, if any of you uh, ever have gone in real life to Mammoth Caverns, uh, you should put it on your bucket list. It's a, it's a very interesting experience. That's where this picture is from, it's from Mammoth Caverns. Nice. Can the tricorder map the location for us too? Oh yeah, most definitely. Like it would be trivial for the tricorder to record which way you turned and all that. But good question, nonetheless. All um, right, we'll do we'll do that then. Okay. That sounds good. That's a little bit more comfortable. All right. So uh, you know, you follow your tricorder uh, towards the life sign. And eventually, you come to an underground spring of water. Uh, it is very clear uh, water. Uh, you can see almost all the way to the bottom. Uh, it is it's probably deceptively deep, uh, you know, because still water is, you know, and clear water is very hard to tell actual depth. Uh, but you're seeing more of the luminescent crystals uh, down at the bottom of this spring. Uh, and that's everything you're seeing so far, but according to your tricorder, the humanoid life sign should be somewhere in this area. Tricorder says whatever I picked up is, is here. Hmm. I could see why it wants to be here, though. Interesting. I walk around and I kind of shout, Hello? Is anyone here? And it is at this point that, Riley, you detect that the life form is getting closer, but you're still not able to pinpoint from what direction. Okay, I continue scanning. Okay. Do you tell Miller this, though? Yes. Okay. Can I hear anything with my ears you certainly rather can. than a scanner uh roll me a let's call this an insight and security please uh difficulty of two i tried you tried so what happens is is you actually don't notice this individual until uh they're literally on top of you and uh, literally slithering out from behind one of the rock faces, uh, there is what can only be described as a Lamia, a humanoid with a snake lower half that is approaching you. Uh, they have this deep purple skin and even darker scaling along their snake half. Uh, they are clad in modest ornamentation and clothing that, strangely enough, has a distinctive ancient Egyptian feel to it. Uh, most of this accoutrement is silver with either red inlay or red gems. Uh, two very uh, intelligent looking eyes peek out from behind a long curtain of jet black hair that turns to red at the tips. And the eyes sort of study all of you carefully. Um, the other thing of note is that behind their head is what appears to be a cobra-like hood. And as her head moves, so does the hood, leading you to believe that it's a natural uh, sort of ornamentation rather than something artificial. And uh, this this individual uh, does keep the distance, but does make themselves known uh, to you. So they, they make sure that you can see them. And I will put their token down. 
and I walk out into the light if if I was obscured anyway in a corner or anything. I kind of have my hands out, not like sorry, dog, not you know, in a non-threatening manner. I say mm-hmm. hello. My name is Captain Jeffrey Miller of the Starship Akagi. This is my crew. So the uh, you can tell by now that uh, you know you've had a chance to see her not moving. You can tell that she's a she, or at least she has female characteristics. Um, and she kind of tilts her head to the side and says, "Human, correct?" And I should say that this comes through not through the Universal Translator. This comes through natural English. That's correct. I am a human. Also, my chief engineer, Lieutenant Commander Riley, Point to Riley, is also a human. And this is Lieutenant Commander Zarya. She is a Denobulan. Hmm. What might I ask Hello. is your name? Uh, my name is Sarah De- Dise. Sarah Dise. Yep, said it right. Uh, my name is Sarah Dise. Uh, I guess since we're talking species, I am a member of the APEP. Forgive us for intruding. I, we were caught in the storm, so we found our way here. Are you the only inhabitant of this planet? I wouldn't call myself an inhabitant, more a wanderer that has probably overstayed her welcome. We, in fact, are explorers, which is how we ended up here. Um, do you require any sort of assistance. I I think after the storm lets up, we will most likely be leaving, but is there any assistance you require? Is this your home? It has been my home for several years now, but I too think that sometime after the storm has settled that I will depart this place. Can I, uh, while they're having that conversation, I want to give my modified tricorder to Zarya. Mm-hmm. So I can get a better. I kind of go into security mode. Okay. Like I'm not drawing my phaser, but I I'm kind of keeping my hand near it, on my hip, and just scanning, just to see with my eyes to see if there's any other movement and see I'm going to act as soon as something if something happens. Okay. And what is Zarya doing? I'm taking the tricorder and I'm just going to keep an eye and make sure that nothing else is creeping up on us Okay. while we're having this conversation. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to remember Miller's focuses here. Um, what does Miller have as focuses? Let's take a look. Okay, so Miller, you have the history focus here, and that's definitely going to come into play. I would like you to roll me a reason and science... Uh, difficulty of two, and you definitely can apply your history focus. I think I'd like to buy an extra dice there because my reason science is terrible. Mm-hmm. Two successes. And that's enough. So when she said the name of her species, the APAP, uh, it stri- you know it strikes a chord with you, and you think about it for a little bit, and you realize that uh, APAP was this giant snake uh, that was viewed as a greatest enemy of Ra, the Egyptian deity Ra. Uh, APAP was also known as Apophis, and they were supposedly the quote-unquote lord of chaos, and the representation of evil being the consequence of an individual's own struggle against non-existence. And between this knowledge and her dress, you could probably come to a conclusion, but I'm not going to, you know, force a conclusion on you. Sarah Dice, I have to say your command of the English language is quite impressive. Have you been to Earth before? Myself, no, but one of my people did. Uh, visit your Earth at one point, yes. Well, once the storm passes, it's very possible that your ship may have received damage. I expect the same thing to happen to our shuttle. If you require assistance, we'd be happy to help. Well, seems that we will be stuck in this cavern for quite a while. I suppose it doesn't hurt if uh, 
I come over to you and we have an actual conversation rather than shouting across the room. Very fair. Um, is she, like, on the other side of the water? Yeah, like, she's on the other side yeah. of the water from you guys. Yeah, I thought there was a little ledge there. Mm-hmm. Of course, be my guest. All right. So just so you know, it's a little bit easier on the stream. I'm going to move you guys over a little bit. And uh, she does, uh, without question, just sort of slithers into the water. And snakes are, you know, even, you know, half snakes that she is. She's very adept at, you know, swimming on over to you with very powerful undulations of her tail. And uh, she arrives uh, on the shore with you guys. And she says, ah, that's much better. Uh, well, uh, honestly don't know where to begin. Uh, it's been a while since I've had really anyone to talk to. Did you come to this planet by yourself? Uh, yes. Uh, in fact, uh, I guess since you didn't recognize my species when I said it, or at least I didn't notice any body language for it, uh, sorry. Um... The Apep are a, uh, a nomadic species. Uh, we tend to kind of go alone uh, out into the stars uh, on our own journeys. And uh, it's really not uncommon for us to go almost our entire lives uh, without seeing another of us. I, For example, I only knew my mother for the first ten years of my life, and after that I was on my own. How do you get from planet to planet? Do you hitchhike or something? Do you have your own ship? I have a small vessel that is capable of faster than light travel. Uh, it's not the fastest thing in the world, but uh, gets me where I need to go. If you don't mind my asking, what brought you to this planet? <laughs> she, uh, she laughs a little bit and says, well... Uh, if uh, you haven't noticed already, I, I am sort of part snake, and desert climates are actually rather agreeable to uh, my biology. I can relate. I'm also from a desert world. I find this environment, well, apart from the storm, rather, I, I find it very invigorating. Ah, yes, the storm. Uh, it's actually a... Uh, somewhat common experience on this vessel or not this vessel this planet um it happens maybe about twice a year when uh the two suns get into a certain configuration they send out an ion storm and you know as long as you know it's coming you can uh, really avoid most of the bad effects of it as it were are they easy to predict like are they on a pretty consistent schedule uh, it's Pretty much every six months, give or take a day. And Zuri's going to just make a little note in her tricorder about that to put in the report for the Vulcans later. Very important note. It's very likely that others may come, other Federation citizens may come to try to colonize this planet. Is there anything that we should know about that you've experienced that might prevent us from doing that? She puts a finger on her chin. Let me think. Uh, yes. Have you seen one of the oasises yet? We've only we've run encountered into one of those. Before. Well, uh, that's good because the oasises here are sort of false impressions, if that makes any sense. The water is drinkable, however, at least for me, it didn't really agree with my system. I don't know human biology, of course, but or whatever you are, uh, Lieutenant Commander Zarya. Um, but I would just avoid drinking water above ground. Now this water here, and she motions at the water uh, that you're next to, this water is pure H2O, at least as far as I can tell. I'd like to scan the water just to... Be sure. Sure. Uh, reason, science, difficulty one. All right, you get a momentum. Yeah, that's uh, that's some very pure water. Uh, in fact, uh, if you were a Ferengi, you would maybe consider, uh, you know, siphoning off this water, bottling it, and 
selling it off as a commodity of some sort. The purest, best tasting water. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for the information. We really appreciate it. We're trying to get a good view of the planet while we're down here. It's too unfortunate that there ended up being this storm. Tell me, uh, you mentioned that you were from Starfleet. I vaguely know that Starfleet is an organization of of planets or maybe a defensive... Uh, I know it exists. I, what's that about? Well, Starfleet is the defense and humanitarian arm of the United Federation of Planets, which is approximately a thousand or so worlds joined together for mutual benefit. Hmm. And uh, she kind of squints her eyes as she looks at the different ornamentation on your uniform. Uh, are any of you engineers? I raise the hand that's not close to the phaser. Ah, I believe it was Riley, yes? Uh, when this storm's over, would you mind uh, taking a look at my engine? Uh, it gave me some trouble a few years ago when I had to activate it for daily maintenance, or not daily, for regular maintenance. Uh, with this storm, I, I fear that I might be grounded for a little bit. With permission from my captain, of course. Absolutely, Mr. Elliot. Whatever we can do to help, we'd be happy to provide assistance. That's, after all, one of the reasons we're out here. Lovely. Um, I don't really have much to offer other than knowledge in return, uh, unless you would maybe like this necklace. And you can see that kind of like the picture, uh, her necklace is sort of concentric rings that go to a very large pommel type uh, gem that uh, is very prominent, very, very uh, shiny red gem. No, no, no compensation is required. Just uh, helping is enough payment. Uh, the satisfaction of helping someone in need. And like I said, that's one of our one of our mission goals is to to not only to explore the, the galaxy and to encounter new life, but also to provide assistance where it's needed. Hmm. How very noble of you. Uh, well, I mean, we've got hours to do basically nothing but talk. Uh, any of you know any good stories? I believe Mr. Riley could tell you a very good story about how he heroically fought off a band of Talarian hook spiders single-handedly. That was a very exciting moment, to be sure. So she looks at Riley expectantly and says, I've never even heard of Talarian hook spiders. Uh, are they big spiders? Are they small spiders? Yeah, they're like the size of a dog. Have you heard of a dog? Uh, no, dog is not ringing. I know what a cat is. Yeah, of course you know. Yeah, about that size. Okay, so pretty big spider. How many of them did you have to deal with? Oh, it was over a thousand. <laughs> uh, I would like you to roll me a control and con. And uh, it's going to be opposed uh, versus her insight and con. All right, one success. And she is going to roll that. 2d20. She she just, she buys it completely and she says, a thousand? That's, you must have quite the large ship. Uh, how did you manage it? We opened the door, flushed it out the airlock. Wait, you, you mean to say that you gathered them all in one place and then just dumped them into space? Seemed like the most efficient use of our, our time. Huh. That must have been rather difficult. Did you, like, literally corral them, or how, how did you manage to do that? Commander? Well, there are various chemicals which the spiders find 
very pleasing. So we filled a room with one, let them come in, and then got rid of them all in one go. Huh. Rather novel solution. It's unfortunate we had to kill them, but they were, well, let's just say, very, very dangerous. I'll have to take your word for it. Again, I... Some of our crew got injured, so keep an eye out if you spot any very large, many-legged creatures. Hmm. Well, they weren't large. They're large for spiders. When they're on your face, they are quite large. <laughs> I True. can imagine. Tell me, uh, since we're sharing uh, tales of beasts... Uh, have you ever heard of Brengarian dragons before? I haven't. What are they like? Well, uh, I think the term is uh, a dragon. Uh, so they're, they're serpentine uh, sort of creatures that uh, are about the size of uh, a shuttle. Well, I don't know what the size of your shuttle is. Uh, they're big. And... Uh, they have this sort of fiery breath that they naturally produce the chemicals for uh, from their food. And uh, they are uh, quite annoying. Uh, one tried to eat one of my shuttle or tried to eat my shuttle a couple times when I was on this one planet and uh, had to uh, escape it somehow. Uh, long story short there, uh, I, uh, I actually threw a bunch of crap in its face, literally. That's much more exciting than the last dragon that I ran into. When I was studying on Earth, one of my classmates told me that Earth had dragons, and they showed me this creature called a Komodo dragon, but it was just a very large lizard. And honestly, I expected more. Now this, uh, this thing has, like, wings and uh, terrible claws and long, sinuous neck and scaling and... It's actually a rather majestic sight. I'd, I'd be happy to share pictures of it. That sounds more like a dragon than I would think of. I'd love to see pictures once we manage to get out of here. Indeed. Riley just doesn't really feel comfortable in this situation. Mm -hmm. He's still in security mode, like... Something feels off to him, and I don't know what. Mm -hmm. Just the weird meeting of, of a creature like this just happens to be on this planet alone. Happens to be in this one cave that we find. So Riley's kind of still got his guard up. Zarya's going to lower her voice a little bit. Commander Riley, is everything okay? I, th I think so. But I'm, I'm just being careful. Sarah, do you say you said that some of your people made their way to Earth a long time ago? Uh, how long ago was that? I imagine Earth's probably changed a lot. I don't recall seeing any of your species the last time I was there. Oh no, it was a very brief visit. I'm trying to remember Earth years. Uh, what is, uh, your current year? Aren't we 2256? No, I think you're like 2285. 56, yeah, that's Discovery. 2285, that's what I'll tell her. 2285, then approximately 6,000 years ago, give or take, give or take a century. Well, yes, I imagine it's remarkably different than... It was the last time someone from your species visited Earth. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, uh, you certainly don't have the style of dress that uh, I've heard stories about. That's kind of uh, kind of our thing. Uh, I honestly don't know if it's true that the humans copied our design or if it was vice versa, but all I know is that the design has stuck, or at least all I know about my people that we tend to dress like this. 
Well, we'd be happy to share our historical records with you, and also it'd be very interesting to to read your own if you if you have any that you could share. Oh, I've got databases full of the stuff. Uh, part of uh, sort of exploring on your own is uh, you get to set your own goals, and uh, one of my goals is. Do you guys hear me? Yes, I can. Yep. Uh, one of my goals is to collect as much information as possible. That why uh, that way, if I ever have children of my own. Uh, I can sort of pass on a cornucopia of knowledge to them. That sounds like a lovely plan. I just kind of find a spot to sit down. Well, you've certainly picked a very nice place to uh, weather the storm. I'm glad we accidentally found our way here. It's not an entirely bad place to, to sit a few hours out. Hello? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yep. Yes. I'm guessing he can't hear us. Um, so yeah, you know, uh, you guys uh, make small talk for the next several hours. And, uh, you know, you get to know her a little bit better. Uh, she seems to be a fairly pleasant individual. Uh, doesn't really seem to be hiding anything. She seems to be very upfront and open about everything. I have one specific question. Sure, what you got? So you said you rarely meet others of your species. Yes. How are you going to run into somebody when you do decide to have children? And uh, she kind of laughs a little bit to herself and says, um, You must be a doctor. Uh, only a doctor would think of such a question. Doctor, mother, same thing. Ah, uh, well, uh, without going into the details, uh, we are a unisex race, a unisex species. Uh, we borrow genetic material from, uh, other species to sort of create, uh, the zygote. And, uh, it's not re really required that we mate with one of our own kind, if that makes any sense. I see. Well, hopefully you'll be able to find the right planet soon enough. Indeed. Has Commander Riley just been on edge for like the hour or two that we've been talking? That's what I'm assuming since apparently he's still having tech issues. No, I'm uh, I'm I'm okay now. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's Ever since we got, we found um, Sarah Dice, Riley's been just making sure because there's no other security officers here. Mm -hmm. Someone's got to watch. Now, Mr. Riley, there's a age old custom, at least back on Camus 3, when you encountered a large body of water such as this. Um, actually, it's a point of pride. I pick up a rock, I try to skip it across the the surface of the water. Uh, roll me a challenge die. <laughs> Alright. It skips once and then goes bloosh. Captain, I grew up on, uh, I, cr I grew up on starships. Uh, I don't have a lot of Customs that come with water, but I'll give it a well, shot. Let's, let's say whoever makes it to the other side of the cave first uh, doesn't have to clean off the shovel, the shuttle when we finally get to it. Riley picks up a rock, and he has never done this before, so he just essentially slam dunks it into the water. Nice, it goes boosh, and it goes nowhere. And uh, so is that. So to say laughs. That seem right? So to say laughs and says, no, 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 I, I think it's more like this. And uh, she picks up a rock and I will roll her challenge die. And she replicates what the captain did. Just skips once, but it does skip across the water a, a little bit. I, I think it's all in the wrist. All right, Zarya, ship's honor is in your hand. Yes, sir. And I will roll my die. Yours skips twice. 
Not as hard as it looks. All right, I'll give it another shot. Same thing. Picks up the rock. Not as slam dunky, but still just slam right into the water. I just don't... I don't get it. You know what? It's fine. Like, it's fine. Like a frisbee, Commander. Like a frisbee. I can disassemble a transporter in minutes and reassemble it faster. I can... I don't have to be good at this. It's fine. Uh, Sir Disay makes a little bit of movement towards you, Riley, and she says, um, I could show you, uh, if, if you wouldn't mind. She motions at your arm. Uh, no, it's, I, I insist, it's, it's fine. I'm not gonna bite you or anything, you know. Uh, the, you know, it's, it's okay. Really is a skill I don't need. I have... My brain packed with information. I don't want to lose something important to gain whatever this is called. She just sort of arcs an eyebrow in a, in a Vulcan manner, I think would be the best way to say it. It's what my dad said. There's only so much information you could pack into a brain. I mean, I'm no doctor, but I don't think it quite works that way. It doesn't. Who am I? Who am I gonna trust? Doctors, or my father? Probably well, doctors. Mr. Riley, but... I was thinking we could we could always blame your finger. I'm sure if you had all your your digits healed up, that you could you could beat all of us. Yeah. Sure. I love how inadvertently he just said he doesn't trust Zarya. Just, you know, throwing that out there. I know, and I already put a note in my tricorder for him to come see me later, so... That's great. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, uh, you make some more small talk. Uh, if you have a specific question, now would be the time. Sarah Dice. Yes? Where do your people come from? If you don't mind me asking. That's a fair question. Uh, do you know the constellation Orion? Yeah. Uh, we come from one of the planets uh, along Orion's belt. Okay. Just curious. And yeah. I love the awkwardness of it, though. It's like, uh, snake lady, what do I say? Uh, well, oh, if this... we happen to not get your ship back in order, we'd be happy to bring you and your ship to a new place to get it all repaired. It's rather kind of you. And uh, it actually is at this point uh, that, uh, Miller, you get a chime on your communicator, and it's loud and clear. And it says, this is uh, Ensign Cerule to Captain Miller. Miller, please respond. This is Miller and the away team. Go ahead. The storm is dying down, sir. Uh, we're able to hear you, and hopefully you can hear us loud and clear. Uh, I believe it is safe to lift off from the planet uh, if you are fine and doing everything down there. That sounds good. We'll make our way back to a shuttle. We've also picked, we've also found an inhabitant or at least a guest of this planet and we will be providing her assistance. She's told us that she may need some help repairing her shuttle, but I think we'll start making our way back now. Very good. We'll expect you in uh, the next couple hours. Sounds good. Away team out. So Sarah Dessay says, uh, well, um, I guess if we're going to check out my shuttle, uh, it's actually not that far from here if you want to come this way. And she points across the water. Uh, there's another cave entrance, because I'm assuming you came in through your own. Uh, there's another cave entrance, uh, about a 10 minute walk that way, uh, that should get us to my shuttle. 
Sure, let's go there first and see if we can get you going, and then we'll go back to ours. This isn't going to require swimming, is it? Uh, I would say by now you could find a non-swimming way across, uh, but if you really okay. wanted to swim, you could. I don't want to get my equipment wet. wet. Ah, I'm sure it's fine. I'm going to do one of the fancy things that I can do as a Denobulan, and I'm going to just climb up the wall and go across that way. <laughs> And as you're climbing, uh, Sir Dice just looks at you and goes, Huh, that is a remarkable skill. Yeah. So, uh, you follow her out, and you arrive back out here uh, into the light. Uh, you can see that the storm has definitely passed by this point. Uh, the landscape looks even more alien now, um, because uh, new sort of... Uh, sand dispersal patterns uh, have emerged. Uh, there's also these big old like crystalline formations uh, that look to be glowing and full of almost looks like glass sculptures. And it probably doesn't take much for you to put together that um, the glowing crystals that were in the cave probably are the same sort of glowing crystals, glass-like things that are out here. Sarah Dice, have you investigated these crystals any? No. Oh, uh, yes, they are a uh, natural formation, a unique property of the sand that uh, almost traps the energy of, of, of electricity and other power within it. Does it store it, or does it pull it from another source? Uh, honestly, I'm not sure. Uh, my guess would be that it stores it in some way. That's interesting. We'll have to keep that in mind when we try to leave. Uh, but yes, uh, I'm over here. Uh, and she leads you between uh, what is basically an arc uh, made out of the rock. And uh, Riley, uh, since you're the engineer here, uh, it doesn't take you but a single glance at her shuttle to realize that even though the outside looks fine, you can just look at what fares for her engines and tell immediately that she's not getting off this planet with that shuttle. Like it's a total write-off? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, I turn to Captain Miller and say, Captain, that shuttle, that wouldn't pass inspection on any planet that I've been to. I don't think that's going to fly again, even if we had Starfleet's best engineers working on it 24-7. Uh, Mr. Raleigh, can you tell how long it's been here? Uh, possibly. I, Commander Zarya, can I have my uh, tricorder back, please? Of course. And I'll hand it right back over. Yeah, and then I... Yeah, let's do an insight engineering difficulty one. Does my focus in flight control systems? Technically, work? it does. Yeah, sure. Why not? And I keep misclicking on. I don't want to open Firefox. Go away. Oh, interesting. So uh, the complication here is you pull out the tricorder and you try to use it. The tricorder has shorted out. Uh, I didn't think that that jury rigging was going to last forever. <sighs> Hopefully we can get the data back when we get back on the Akagi. Um, sorry, uh, can I can I just do a visual scan to see if I can tell how long it's been there? Like to see roughly how long it's been there? Yeah, uh, roughly you can tell that it's definitely seen at least a couple storms, so, I mean, uh, Sarah Dice Sarah didn't really say specifically how many years she was here, but it would check out if she's experienced a few storms. It's probably years. Mm hmm Alright, I pass that info to the captain. Okay, thanks, Riley. Just curious. Uh, unfortunately, Sarah DC, it looks like your shuttle may not be going anywhere. 
Uh, I'd like to offer. We could always tr we could always uh, tractor beam your shuttle back to our ship, and see if we can enact some repairs there, or if all else fails, give you a ride somewhere. That would be again rather kind of you. Um, yeah, let's let's do that then. Okay, well let's head back to our shuttle and dig it out and see if we can get we can all get going. All right. So, you know, long story short, uh, when you get back to your shuttle, uh, you just have to do a little bit of digging to get it going. Uh, but uh, with uh, Sir Dice's help of instructing you where to latch a tractor beam on, uh, your shuttle tractor beams uh, hers and takes it back up to the Akagi. And uh, I think this is a perfect opportunity to end the session. That way we don't overload Zines and make him miss a whole lot. So yeah, uh, this is where I'm going to end the stream. So Twitch, YouTube, etc., etc. Thank you so much for watching, and see you later. Bye-bye.